Um, hi everyone, my name is Jaron Mink. I'm a fourth year PhD candidate from UIUC. And today I'm excited to present, uh, present our findings on how practitioners perceive machine learning tools, explanations, and their respective benefits and pain points in security operations. So security operation centers protect organizations via workflows. And a common example of such a workflow begins with low level alerts, where detection systems discover specific malicious behaviors on networks or devices in their infrastructure. These alerts are then sent to a security and information event management system to be processed and determined if they're credible. These alerts are then investigated and remediated via oh, a triage center. Um, and if they're found to be, uh, and if they're found to be valid, then they are then remediated. Um, lastly, if needed, these alerts are then further analyzed in a post-attack operation setting, in which they are determined uh, to learn preventative information for future remedial action. But importantly, in nearly every stage of this process, there are not just uh, these processes are not just car uh, carried out automatically, but rather human practitioners interact with these tools to classify security events as malicious or benign. Practitioners may need to configure these tools, validate the results of the tool, or use a tool to mitigate a specific threat. And typically, these tools are powered by one of two common mechanisms. Rules or signature-based mechanisms where inputs are directly matched with a predefined behavior, or the recently introduced machine learning mechanisms. So machine learning classification is becoming increasingly integrated and embraced by the security community. In the last few years alone, advertising for machine learning or AI in industry has gotten increasingly popular, promising great detection capabilities and rapid responses beyond traditional non-AI defenses. And this trend is in no sense dying down. With their acquisition of OpenAI, Microsoft is now promoting language model-based security tools, allowing practitioners to ask models in, to assist in security investigations. But industry is not alone in this. In recent years, a large number of academic publications have focused on using machine learning to power security systems. And even more recently, these machine learning systems are beginning to be augmented with explanations. So in addition to just detecting malicious events, explanations are now made to provide reasoning for why certain classifications were made. Thus, practitioners are now handed machine learning tools in order to more effectively use, uh, be applied at their job. However, there hasn't been an investigation of what practitioners actually think of these tools. Thus, we ask, what effect practitioners uh, think of machine learning? And more specifically, we ask three primary questions. First, where and how is machine learning used in current security operation centers? Second, what are the perceived benefits and challenges of using machine learning in practical security operations? And third, to evaluate whether these explanations actually resolve any of the noted challenges. How are existing ex machine learning explanations actually perceived in practical security operations? To answer these questions, we recruited 18 security practitioners that spent at least one year professionally working with a security classification tool. We found a diverse set of participants that include security operation leads, engineers, researchers, analysts, develops, developers, as well as penetration testers. Each participant was interviewed over a 60-minute online conference call that went over three primary topics. Their professional background and the classification systems they use, their perspectives on machine learning, and their thoughts on three machine learning explanations and the features that they ideally would like them to have. So what do we find? Begin with how machine learning is used in security operation centers. We find that typically, machine learning is actually used alongside rule-based techniques. When reporting tool usage, only a few participants reported just using rules or machine learning systems. In fact, the majority, however, reported that they use both tools in parallel. Broadly, those who use both tools believe that while ML did provide additional benefits, they typically were used in a supportive manner, while deterministic rule-based solutions were typically uh, felt to uh, be the core backbone of their detection strategy. And we'll discover the reason for these uh, beliefs by asking uh, participants' perceptions of both systems. So in asking participants about the benefits and pain points of machine learning, we discover a set of factors practitioners believe are important for these types of tools to have. And in particular, there are five primary factors. Usability, effectiveness, adoptability, efficiency, and security. Participants felt that these factors differed for both machine learning and rule-based tools, and that each either relied on quality data or human expertise. Diving deep into effectiveness, we find a couple of interesting results. 
Specifically, we find that practitioners do not believe that machine learning is effective enough to be used alone. When considering what influences their choice of classification tools, participants still note that effectiveness or the ability to just correctly classify security events under non-adversarial scenarios to be a major concern, with this being the most reported factor along with usability. This implies that while extra security tool features may be nice, simply providing the correct answer is still generally a large concern and often an unmet need for practitioners. When considering machine learning specifically, participants generally felt that the systems did not fully meet their needs. While machine learning was perceived to have fewer false negatives compared to rule-based systems, this positive was overshadowed by a much larger concern. Specifically, compared to rule-based systems, participants considered machine learning to have a disruptive amount of false positives. For instance, one developer noted that their experience with machine learning was not good. There were lots of false positives and was a primary weakness of the system. However, participants noted that if used together, one could often gather the benefits of both systems. For instance, one participant noted that rules could capture the majority of previously seen malicious behavior with a low false positive rate, while machine learning could capture the smaller amount of previously unseen behavior. They felt that this setup maximized the capture of behaviors while uh, moderating the amount of false positives to a reasonable amount. Participants also discussed usability, or how easy it is to either use, uh, how easy it is to use one of the systems. And we find that both machine learning as well as rule-based systems have serious usability issues. In particular, participants noted that machine learning was often difficult uh, to figure out why a specific output was given, and this was usually due to the black box, uh, the black box nature of such systems. However, participants also noted that rule-based systems held such, uh, were also difficult to figure out exactly why an output was given. Uh, participants often noted that rules themselves could be complicated, long, and confusing, and typically were black boxes within themselves. Additionally, these rules could be written by other people, such as other analysts or third-party uh, third companies. Thus, for, a lot of, uh, for many of these practitioners, um, it was very difficult to figure out exactly why something was outputted. For instance, one uh, manager noted that, who wrote the signal? Go and find him. Ask him what he did. Because of this, debugging machine learning and rule-based tools often use the same process of testing historical data. One researcher, for, uh, for instance, noted that when they need to check the rules, they often use historical data. And for ML models, they often follow the same process. Participants also discussed how important it is for tools to be able to withstand adversarial behaviors against the specific system. And we found that tool security, or the ability to stay robust when given adversarial inputs, was generally a lesser concern among participants. When considering the security of rule and machine learning-based tools, Participants noted that both systems have vulnerabilities, albeit somewhat different. Participants perceived rule-based systems as insecure against evasion attacks, as they felt it was easy for even a novice attacker to bypass specific systems by likely changing an input structure. In contrast, machine learning systems were perceived as slightly more secure against simple evasion te techniques, requiring attackers to play, uh, perform more complex gradient-based techniques. However, unlike rules, machine learning was also at risk at having a data set poisoned, a concern among some of the participants. But despite these concerns, when discussing tool requirements, security was only mentioned by a few participants. As noted, the majority of participants focused on effectiveness and usability of tools, and thus this might imply that while adversarial connectedness is not yet a primary CERN, this may be due, because this may be due to the fact that non-adversarial correctness is still largely an open issue for practitioners. We also discuss issues such as efficiency and adaptability of tools, um, but due to time, uh, check out the, more, the paper for uh, some more details. After discussing the perceptions of machine learning and other tools, we also asked participants whether recently proposed ideas for machine learning explanations would alleviate any of these held concerns. We find that explanations are often used together with model decisions and experts' knowledge for practitioners to accomplish one of two primary goals. First, by comparing an expert's knowledge with the provided explanation, practitioners note that they would often be able to determine if a model is performing correctly. So just by simply noting that their preconceived understanding of malicious behavior uh, model developers often noted that the explanation would know, uh, help them know if the system was built correctly, while security analysts know that explanations would help them determine if a specific alert was correct. For instance, one engineer noted that if the explanation aligned with their expectations, they would often assume that the system was right. 
And if not, then they would assume it was a false positive. Second, by comparing the results of the model along with the explanation, practitioners would use explanations to better understand security events external to the model. For instance, if a practitioner did not yet hold a strong belief, they generally noted that explanations could act as a useful teaching device, providing them context in a certain situation or teaching them long-term insights. For instance, one SOC manager noted that explanations would help them build their own mental heuristic model for what malicious characteristics to look out for. Practitioners also provided ways that explanations can be improved for security-specific contexts. First, practitioners noted that providing immediate actionable information would be helpful in responding to threats. Some participants desired immediate steps, while others noted that simply providing a classification in the context of an attack surface will allow practitioners to discover what to do next. Second, participants noted that explanations which provide higher level attacker behaviors and summaries proved useful for several stakeholders. Participants noted that non-technical personnel would be better able to understand what is occurring in their organization, while technical personnel would be able to formulate long-term behaviors of attackers, allowing them to consider future preventative measures. For instance, one researcher noted that since malicious behaviors of campaigns change over time, if they could understand what has changed, then they'll be in a better position to respond. Third, participants noted that how explanations are presented could also be improved. In addition to typical usability improvements, such as allowing uh, for interactive queries and the use of natural language, some participants noted that the privacy of explanations themselves should be considered. For instance, one manager noted that it may be useful to present this information to non-internal entities, such as clients. Thus, having a way to redact certain pieces of information from the explanations and allow for differentiated levels of access would provide privacy needed to show what other stakeholders what's going on. Based on these results, we provide several directions for future research. First, as we discovered that practitioners typically consider machine learning tools to not be effective alone and require rules, we find a key gap in current research, that is meaningful integration of both machine learning and rule-based systems for security operations. One possible direction may be allowing expert analysts to provide their own initial rule sets to machine learning systems, which could then explore a classification space. This may allow for human expertise to guide and constrain the rule generation process while also resulting in a familiar rule-based interface for an analysts. Second, we find that explanations need to be tailored to specific use cases and requirements that differ from generic ML explanations. As already mentioned, our participants provide several proposals for security-specific improvements. Thus, future work should investigate whether such suggestions are technically feasible and prove useful in actual security operations. Thanks so much for listening to my talk, and I'm happy to list, uh, take any questions. Okay, great. So I think we have time for just a couple questions. Hi, Jerome. Hi. I'm Lorenzo from UCL, so great talk, thanks. So I wonder, I was actually quite surprised about the answer from practitioners uh, with respect to ML. Uh, versus uh, rule-based systems and robustness. So they, they consider rule-based easy to evade, that's sure, and ML more robust against evasion attacks. So I wonder whether you also ask um, whether they were just concerned about adversarial attacks in the sense of adversarial machine learning, or also more traditional distribution shift. Yes, so distribution shift was typically always a concern. Uh, with respect to how we divided the properties up in the paper, um, we consider distribution shift to be on the effectiveness side of it. Um, practitioners were definitely concerned about this um, with respect to other uh, details in the paper, but with respect to like comparison of rules to machine learning, generally practitioners did agree that machine learning was uh, more generalizable and compared to rule-based signatures that could be outdated within a few weeks, machine learning def uh, usually had longer lifespans. Um, uh, with respect to security, we're, we're more specifically talking about specific adversarial behaviors against one system, and for that, people were generally um, less concerned. But certainly, distribution shift was on the top of everyone's minds. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Uh, really cool work. Uh, I'm curious if you drilled down in your study about uh, what your participants actually thought of when they were speaking about ML tools. So are these products that advertise themselves as machine learning? Are these machine learning models that they deployed themselves? and whether there were any differences uh, based on those sort of... Yeah, so our participants definitely had varying degrees of understanding uh, or perceptions of what machine learning was. Um, broadly, people generally understood that you, know, you, you give data to a model and it 
has some sort of performance as a result. Um, that's typically because they actually, that was the functional thing they had to do with these models often. Um, but certainly uh, those who were researchers or those who were tool designers understood the nuances of it a bit more, understood more of the caveats, while others just had a bit more generic understanding where um, machine learning may be a bit more related to just generic like artificial intelligence. So um, with respect to those perceptions, um, sometimes, uh, again, those who like had more in-depth understanding of machine learning usually provided a bit more nuanced opinions in our interviews. Um, but even those who had somewhat surface level opinions, uh, surface level understandings, um, still provided opinions that they just generally thought machine learning um, was not up to par. Um, if, again, they functionally see kind of the output of that. So um, yeah, different degrees of understanding, uh, but most people still had a pretty strong opinion. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so let's thank Jaron one more time. <laughs>